New post-war old Dutch cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents... Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as new post-war old Dutch cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. You just took a $10,000 fee from a client and then accused him of murder. That's right, Patsy. But I don't understand. How could he have committed the murder? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. But he was with us when it happened. Yes, I know. You and I, Patsy, are his alibi. And yet I'm positive he killed William Lasher. And now, the case of the perfect alibi. Today's adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter... Brought to you by a new post-war Old Dutch cleanser. It is almost 8 o'clock in the evening, and Nick Carter and his assistant Patsy Bowen are bound for the theater. It's one of those rare evenings when Nick is not working, and Patsy is happy enough to sing. Oh, Nick. First the theater, then supper and dancing. Oh, we won't get home until morning. Well, we well, get Patsy, home until it's morning. worth taking an evening <laughs> off to see you so happy. <laughs> oh, I am happy, Nick. They'll just be us tonight. No policemen, no crooks, no anybody. Hey, look at that fool. Think he's driving right at us. Hey, Patsy, brace yourself. <gasps> oh. Why the... Oh, that driver must be drunk. Crazy fool. He's not injured. I'll tell him a thing or two. Are you in there? You hurt? No. No, I'm okay. Well, get out and let's have a look at you. It, it was my fault entirely. I'll be glad to pay all the damage. What's wrong with you? Plenty of light on this street. You must have seen us coming. I know. I, I said it was my fault. Here. Here's my license and my registration. I, I'll call my attorney in the morning and he'll get in touch with you. You're Paul Sanders. Yes, yes. Now, you must have just started out. The radiator of your car isn't even warm. Well, I was traveling slowly. I was just driving. With your eyes shut. Well, my name is Nick Carter. You'll need that in your accident report. You're Nick Carter? Really? He certainly is, really. Mr. Carter, I need your help, desperately. For what? Mr. Carter, a man is going to be murdered tonight, and I'm the man with the strongest motive in the world for killing what? him. You have the strongest motive? Yes, I have. Mr. Carter, you may be the means of saving my life and the life of William Lasher as well. William Lasher? Yes. Not the man who used to be district attorney. That's right. He represents certain clients who are after my scalp. Naturally, that makes him my enemy, too. So what? I phoned him just a little while ago. I argued and pleaded with him, but it was no use. He can ruin me, and he's going to do it, if he lives. You don't make sense yet. Go well, on. While I was talking to him on the phone, he received a letter by messenger. He, he read it to me and accused me of sending it. It said that Lasher was going to be killed tonight. Nick, isn't Lasher that DA who was so tough they refused to let his name go up for re-election? Yes, Patsy, stepped on too many toes. Oh. I must have a reliable person who will swear that I couldn't have killed Lasher. Will you take the job, Mr. Carter? You know, Mr. Sanders, I think maybe I will. I'll pay you any fee you ask, anything. The fee will be $10,000, Mr. Sanders. $10,000? Well, that's pretty steep, but okay, I'll pay it. All right. First thing to do is to establish the fact that Lasher's alive right this minute. Suppose we use my car, Mr. Sanders. Mine will run. Yours doesn't look as if it would. Very well. I don't like this, Nick. Neither do I. Why do you think I accepted this case? Well, come on, Mr. Sanders. Let's look into this murder you say is going to happen. <laughs> sake, Mr. Sanders. I hope Mr. Lasher is alive. I hope so, too, even though I detest the man. Uh, I think someone's coming, Nick. Yes? I'd like to see Mr. Lasher. I'm Nick Carter. You're Nick Carter? The detective? Yes, may I see him, please? Well, gee, I'm sorry, but he left strict orders that he wasn't to be disturbed under any circumstances. In spite of his orders, I want to see him whether he's all right. We have reason to believe he might be murdered tonight. Murdered? Why, uh, oh, all right, I'll knock on the study door. He gets awful sore when I disobey him, but, well, I'll try it. Who's he, Mr. Sanders? Name's Joey Wilson. Nice boy. Lasher's his guardian. Oh. Mr. Lasher? Mr. Lasher? Go away. I told you I don't want to be disturbed. You see? Here, yeah, let me try. Mr. Lasher, this is Nick Carter. I want to talk to you. I said go away. I'll see no one tonight. Well, I'm afraid you're going to see me because I want to see you. Confound you! 
Get out of here! What, what happened, Nick? Oh, he threw a book at me. Fortunately, oh. his aim was bad. Uh, then he's still alive. Yes, Sanders. Luckily for you, he's very much alive. Oh, Joey, do you know Mr. Sanders here? Why, yes, sir. He comes to see Mr. Lasher sometimes. When was the last time he came to this house? Oh, let me see. He hasn't been here in a long time. At least for two months. Yes, yes, at least that. I see. Well, it's now 8.32. Remember that, all of you. Lasher is alive now. What's more, Sanders? Yes, Mr. Carter? We're going to take further precautions to see that he stays alive, at least as far as you're concerned. Come on. <laughs> Carter, what's the idea of bringing me here to police headquarters? Because I want to look in on my friend, Sergeant Matheson, before we go back to Lasher's place. Well, at least the last two hours have passed quickly. Seeing your offices in laboratory was quite an experience, Carter. Well, at least it was one way of killing time while we were establishing your alibi. Uh, here's the sergeant's office, Nick. Hi, Matty. Oh, hi, Nick. Patsy. Hello. This is Mr. Sanders. Sergeant Matheson. Hiya, Sanders. And you. Any further word from Lasher, Nick? No, Matty. I called Joey half hour ago. He reported Lasher was still very much alive. Good. I sent four men up there, as you suggested, just to cover the house and sort of keep a watch over Lasher. Thanks, Matty. I uh, also did some checking down here. You know, Nick, Lasher was about the toughest DA we've ever had. Yeah, so I recall. One of the boys he put away, and one who hated Lasher like poison, got out of prison yesterday... Well, that's interesting. Who is he? Pete Arnold. Lasher got him sent up for 15 years for armed robbery. And the day he was sentenced, Arnold swore he'd get Lasher for sending him up. I think I remember him. Wasn't he a big, powerful fellow? Yeah, mean and dangerous, too. You know, Nick, I think we ought to go see Lasher again, whether he likes it or not. I think you got something there, Matty. Let's go. Come on, Sanders. All right. Where you go, I go. For tonight, at least. Got your men well hidden, Matty. Didn't see one anywhere. They're here all right, Nick. Don't worry about that. Hello. Oh, it's you again, Mr. Carter. Yes, Joey, and this time we're going to talk to Mr. Lasher, orders or no orders. Well, it's at your own risk, Mr. Carter. I know, Joey. Mr. Lasher, I'm coming in. I want to talk... <gasps> hey. Nick, he's dead. Oh, no, he can't be. He's dead all right. Dead, is he? Well, everyone stay right where you are. Don't touch a thing. Hey, let me see. There's no blood, Nick. No. No sign of a struggle, either. Just that terrible expression on his face. To me, that means just one thing, Patsy. Lasher was poisoned. Nick, someone was here with him. Look at that bottle of liquor and the two glasses here on the desk. And the glass beside Lasher's hand is empty. But the other one's full. I'll call the medical examiner and the homicide boys. Now, you four go back in the living room. I don't want anything disturbed in here, intentionally or otherwise. <laughs> Hey, Nick, a little while ago, two of the men I got outside saw someone peering through the window of the study where we found Lasher's body. Did they catch him? No, they lost him in the darkness. Huh. They said he resembled Pete Arnold in size. So the window's being dusted for prints, and so are the bottle and glasses. Oh, those glasses are hobnailed, Matty. They're huh? too rough to take an impression. Yeah, yeah, I'm afraid you're right. Well, I'm going back in the study, Nick. You carry on, huh? Okay, Matty. Uh, Joey, why did Mr. Lasher insist upon being alone tonight? I don't know. All I know is that every once in a while he'd clear everybody out of the house except me. And my job was to see that nobody disturbed him. Mm -hmm. When was the last time that happened? Oh, I'm not sure. About a year ago, I guess. Hey, Nick. Oh, yes, Matty. Yep, there were prints on the window. They match Pete Arnold's. That's so. And the medical examiner says he thinks it's poison. Just in the glass that Lasher drank from? No, in both glasses. The murderer must have slipped the poison into the bottle before it was poured. I see. Well, one thing is sure. Sanders didn't kill him. He was with us all the time. Thank you, Miss Bowen, for those kind words. Well, I'll get back to headquarters in case something breaks down there. Okay, Matty. You'll phone me just as soon as the poison's identified? You bet I will, Nick. Good. The minute I find out. Well, two lucky things happened to me tonight. That's so. Lasher is dead, and I'm saved from bankruptcy. Also, I ran into Nick Carter, who furnished me with a perfect alibi. 
I'm not even suspected of the murder. Well, you're a lucky man, Mr. Sanders. Uh, now, there was something said about a fee. The fee? Oh, yes, uh -huh. yes. I've got the cash right with me. Here, in $500 bills. Oh, lucky. Yes, there you are, Mr. Carter. $10,000 for three hours' work. Sanders, how does it happen you're carrying all that money around? I always carry a lot of cash. Wouldn't be that you purposely had that much on you so you could wave it under my nose if I didn't want to take the case. What? Why, I didn't even know I'd meet you. No? When you collided with me, the radiator of your car was almost cold, yet you said you'd been driving around. Well, I had been. I doubt that. I believe you were parked at the curb until you saw Patsy and me start away from my house. I believe you were waiting for us. Are you trying to say that I framed that smash-up? I am. You deliberately planned to have me furnish you with an alibi. <laughs> I suppose next you'll say that I actually murdered Lasher. Yeah, I think you did. Well, oh, Nick, how could he? Carter, that's crazy. How could I have been with you and be at this house at the same time? I don't know the answers yet, but I'm going to find them. I'm sure you killed him. I don't have to stand here and listen to slander. You're not free to leave yet, Sanders, so stick around. Don't worry. I'll be around if you need me. Nick, what's going on here? You just took a $10,000 fee from a client and then accused him of murder. That's right, Patsy. Well, I don't understand. He was with us when it happened. You and I are his alibi. Yes, I know. But in spite of that, I'm positive Sanders killed William Lasher. As the case moves swiftly to a climax, Nick and Patsy serve as the alibi for the man Nick accuses of murder. In just a moment, we'll learn whether Nick can make this accusation stand. Now, back to the case of the perfect alibi. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch cleanser. It is a short time later. The police are gone. Nick and Patsy are upstairs investigating Lasher's bedroom. Well, nothing here that gives us any clue. Uh-uh. You really think he murdered Lasher? I do. Well, what about Pete Arnold? He swore he'd kill Lasher someday. Pete Arnold didn't do this job. Well, how can you be so sure about that? Look, Patsy, Lasher knew Arnold was dangerous. Would he have invited him in for a drink? No. No, I don't suppose so. Besides, men like Arnold don't use poison when they kill. Yes? It's me, Joey. Oh, come on in. Yes, Joey? Well, I thought I'd see if there was anything I could do. Oh, yes, yes, perhaps there is, Joey. Uh... Lasher was obviously a hot-tempered man. Was he always that way? Oh, no, sir. That was just on the surface. Underneath, he was a swell guy. Oh, that's so. Why, he built a new wing on the hospital, and it cost him a quarter of a million dollars. That's the Blystone Wing. Why'd he use that name? Because he didn't want his own name on it. He didn't even want anybody to know he'd paid for it. Well, uh, who was Blystone? Anyone special? Oh, yes. Mr. Blystone saved Mr. Lash's life in the First World War, and he was nearly killed doing it. Oh. He used to come here every year to talk about the war and old times and stuff. It was sort of an anniversary. You know where Blystone is now? Oh, he died five years ago. Oh, he... Oh, uh, must be Maddie calling about the poison, Patsy. Oh, I'll get it. Okay, thanks. Uh, about this Blystone... I'm coming. I'm coming. Oh, draft dark, stay away is like... <laughs> <laughs> All right, Patsy. Oh, oh, Patsy. Nick, Nick, I tripped. Well, never mind. Are you all right? Are I you hurt, Miss Bowen? No, no, I, I don't think so. There was something stretched across the stairway. I, I felt it hit my ankle, and then I lost my balance. Gee, that's too bad. Sanders did that. Huh? Getting scared. He knew I expected a phone call and wanted me to break my neck, but he tripped you instead. But what was it that tripped me? This is an open stairway with a railing on both sides. You could have passed a wire or a cord across the step, pulled it up as you came down, then pulled the cord free and got away. Oh, gosh, what a dirty trick. I'll say. Help me up, Nick. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm all right. All right, let me help you to the studio, Patsy. Mm -hmm. Sit down there and rest for a bit. Thanks, Nick. How's your phone? Okay? Much better. All right, there you are. Take it easy now until you feel okay. I will. Oh, Nick, that Sergeant Matheson probably wondering what on earth's wrong. Shall I answer it? No, no, I'll get it. Nick Carter speaking. Look, why don't you answer the phone? I was getting all set to come out there and see if you were still alive. I'm sorry, Maddie. Patsy tried to answer your first call, but she fell down the stairs. She fell? She didn't hurt herself. No, no, I don't think so. Nothing serious. Oh, good. Well, your hunch was right, Nick. The autopsy shows the liquor was poison. 
That was potassium cyanide in the bottle and both glasses. So that's why it works so fast. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you, you better watch out for Pete Arnold. My boys never did see him leave the place. Thanks, Mary. I'll do that. What did the sergeant say, Nick? Says it was poison. Cyanide. Oh. Hey, Joey, were there any more glasses to this set Mr. Lasher used? Not that I know of. I never saw more than two of them. I see. Hey, this brandy. It's imported from France. More than 40 years old. Golly, it must be priceless. It is if you go in for that sort of thing. <sighs> now, to whom would Lasher serve 40-year-old brandy? Have to be somebody very special. Mr. Carter, I remember now. Yeah, what? Mr. Blystone, every time he came here, that bottle of brandy would turn up. Well, now. And about a year, uh, once about a, a year since Mr. Blystone died, I, I'd i found the bottle here on the desk again with the two glasses. Did Lasher drink much? Well, he never drank, Mr. Carter, except, well, maybe the times I found the bottle left on the desk. Nick, they come here quickly, by the window. Yes, what is it, Bessie? The second floor of the garage. Watch that window right in the middle. Yes. Someone's looking out. Someone with a cigarette in his mouth. Could... Could that be Pete Arnold? I don't know. But it won't take me long to find out. Watch it now, Patsy. He may... Oh! Get down, get down, get down. Nicky... Look, you stay right here. Don't move. But what are you going to do? I'm going around the other side. He's out of the garage now and around the west corner. I saw the gun flash. Oh, Nick, please be careful. I'll be careful. Now, if I can just make it to the... Uh-huh. Still shooting over the other way. Now, if I jump in fast... I got that gun! Why, you... That'll hold you. Nick! Nick, did you get him? I did. He'll be with us as soon as he wakes up. Oh. Uh, having trouble, Mr. Carter? Well, Mr. Sanders. Yeah, Sanders, where have you been while all the fireworks were going on? I was just walking around, uh, thinking. Okay, suppose you take all of Pete's legs. We'll carry him into the house. Then we'll all do some thinking. Together. <laughs> Okay, one handcuff around this wrist, the chain behind the steam pipe, and the second cuff on his other wrist. Which takes care of Pete Arnold for the time being. But Carter, why did you bring Arnold upstairs? Why not just turn him over to the police? Because there are no police here at the moment, Sanders. Matty took his men away. Figured that whoever had been prowling around had gone by now. He's waking up, Nick. Where am I? All right, cut it, Pete. You're not fooling anyone. I'm Nick Carter. Try to kill Patsy and me. Oh, what a sap I've been. What a sap. Pete, did you kill Lasher? No. I was going to, but when I looked in the window, he was sitting there, dead. Then what happened? I heard the cops moving around, so I hid in the garage. Why? Because I had to. If the cops seen me here, they'd have framed me for the job. Nobody's framing you, Pete. But the police are going to ask you a lot of questions. Well... I guess I'll be here when they come. Is this all you're going to do, Carter? Sit here in the study and wait? Aren't you going to send for the police? I'll be glad to, Sanders. You decided to confess? You're crazy, Carter. Here you have a man who swore he'd murder Lasher, who even tried to shoot you. Don't you know when you've caught a killer? <laughs> Sanders, there's an old photograph hanging on the wall here behind Lasher's desk. Huh? Looks like some of the men from Lasher's old infantry company. Yes, that's what it is, Mr. Carter. Oh, I know that picture. I've got a copy of it. Uh huh. You're the third one from the left, aren't you? Yes. Who are the others? Can you name them? Yes, yeah, most of them. It's Brown, Morrison, Kelly, Blystone. And you knew but... Blystone? Of course I did. Oh. He's my sergeant. But if you're trying to tie him into this, you're wrong. He's been dead for five years. Yeah, so Joey told me. Oh, Patsy. Huh? Come into the living room a minute, will you? Of course, Nick. You too, Joey. Sure, Mr. Carter. Now listen, both of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to accuse Sanders of murder again, point blank. And I'm going to show him how I can prove it. 
Gee, can you do that? I'm going to try. I get it. You want to make him so desperate, he'll do something that will give himself away. That's it. Oh, but what about Pete Arnold? I've told you, Patsy, nothing as far as Lasher's murder is concerned. But if Pete didn't do it, and Sanders was with us, who was with Lasher when he was killed? Somebody had to be. Patsy, when Lasher died, there was no one with him except possibly a ghost. Well, a ghost? Nick, are you trying to tell me this is a supernatural case? No, simply the work of a murderer who planned every move well in advance. Oh. Now, let's get back to the study while I tell Sanders how he murdered Lasher without even being present. Well, be careful, Nick. Sanders may have a gun. I shouldn't be surprised. That's where Joey comes in. Me? Oh, gosh, I'll do anything I can. Okay, Joey, take one of those heavy bookends off that table. Go out of the house and around to the back. You have three minutes to reach the windows looking into the study. But then, then what do I do? Joey, when the time comes for you to act, you'll know it without me telling you. Oh. <laughs> Again, eh, Carter? Yes, Sanders. Want to establish some facts. Oh? You knew Lasher and his dead friend Blystone from World War I. Suppose I did. You knew that Blystone saved Lasher's life and that Lasher and Blystone made a pledge after the war was over to meet once a year and celebrate the rescue. Does that make me a murderer? Now, Lasher never used liquor except once a year when he and Blystone each drank a small glass of this fine old brandy. And that celebration always took place on the same day, the date of Lasher's rescue, a date you knew because you were there when it happened. So, two men celebrate an anniversary and that makes me a murderer. It does because you knew about it. Joey tells me the bottle and the two glasses were kept in plain sight in the cabinet over the desk. You must have seen them many times. It's been very easy for you to come here to see Lasher, and then, while you were waiting here in the study for him... So that's it. Get it, Patsy? Of course. Sanders poisoned the bottle of brandy when he was here over two months ago. He knew it wouldn't be used until tonight, and he planned to set up an alibi for the exact time when Lasher would be killed. All right, both of you, put your hands up fast. Oh, I told you he had a gun near. Get him up. Thank you. So you found out about me. I did. You were too anxious to have Patsy and me be your alibi, and you were too eager to pay too much money for such a small job. I'm admitting nothing, Carter. But don't move, either of you. I have plans for you. Sanders backs away, his finger tightening against the trigger. We'll see what Nick does about this in just a moment. Now for the conclusion of the case of the perfect alibi. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch cleanser. Sanders slowly levels his gun at Nick and Patsy as he says, Here's where you and Miss Bowen get it. I hope you're ready. Put down, Patsy. Oh, nice going, Nick. That was some haymaker you landed on his jaw. Well, he won't do any more shooting for a while. Was it okay, Mr. Carter? Ah, you are marvelous. You were wonderful, Joey. Oh, gee, thanks, Miss Boy. Mrs. Bowen. Boy, is he out cold. <laughs> well, Nick, your plan seems to have worked. Yep. Yeah. When Joey smashed the window, Sanders reacted just as I hoped he would. And that gave you a chance to go for him. Yeah. Well, Matty will have two prisoners now. Pete Arnold and Sanders. Gosh. It's hard to believe. Sanders killed Lasher and wasn't even here when it happened. That's right. Then Blystone was the ghost who was with Lasher when he was killed. Right. Oh, gosh, Nick, that was a clever scheme. Yes, and safe, too. The brandy was never used for anything else. <laughs> he simply set a murder trap and waited for the reunion to set it off. Right, which is murder in the first degree, as he'll find out very shortly. <laughs> to the order of the community chest. $10,000. <laughs> Nick, this is the first time in a long time a murderer's money has helped a worthy cause. A murderer's money? Hmm? Well, I like that. That's my money, Patsy. I earned it by giving Sanders the alibi he wanted. <laughs> oh, that's right, you did. Now, if you'll just sign the check, I'll get it into the mails right away. All right, then you can go home. Oh, it's too bad you had to miss the play, Patsy. Yes, it's a shame. It was a mystery, Nick. Honestly, I love mystery plays more than any other kind. Mm. 
Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented each week at this time and over these same stations by the Cudahy Packing Company, makers of new post-war Old Dutch Cleanser. Nick Carter, Master Detective, produced and directed by Jock McGregor, is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Ed Latimer plays Matty. Today's script was written by Norman A. Daniels. Original music is played by Henry Silverne. This program is fictional, and any resemblance therein to actual persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is Bob Martin saying, when minutes count, use new post-war Old Dutch Cleanser. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.